The Shedd Aquarium is one of the oldest continuously functioning aquariums in the world. It came into existence during a challenging time in United States history. However, most people don't realize that before the Shedd, Chicago already had a public aquarium. Lincoln Park Zoo opened Chicago's first public aquarium in 1923. It was one of only seven public aquariums nationwide at that time, attracting two million visitors a year. It displayed the largest freshwater aquarium in the world, exhibiting North American and tropical freshwater fishes. The basement of the aquarium's elegant brick building housed a hatchery where trout, whitefish, and pike eggs were hatched to restock aquarium exhibits and repopulate Lake Michigan and other northern waters. The following year, 1924, John Graves Shedd donated more than two million dollars with a dream of building the world's largest and most diverse public aquarium for the people of Chicago. At that time, Shedd had recently retired as president of Marshall Field Department Store, located on State Street. He was considered a great merchant. However, he came from humble beginnings. He believed in civic duty and contributing to his community. The gift of a one-of-a-kind public aquarium would offer an important cultural contribution to society. His vision of the finest aquarium in the world would complement the already existing Field Museum and Art Institute of Chicago in the Grant Park region. The aquarium was to be located on the edge of Lake Michigan at 1200 Lakeshore Drive. By 1925, the Shedd Aquarium Society had contracted with the South Park Commission to build and stock a high caliber unique aquarium. Every publicly visible aspect of the aquarium was to reflect elegance. The outside walls of the building were laden with Georgia marble. The front of the aquarium resembled classic Greek architecture, including columns to the entranceway. Also based on Greek architecture was the aquarium floor plan in which a circular center was crossed with exits leading to pathways. The rotunda area was the centerpiece from where three galleries extended. Above the rotunda was an 80-foot wide glass dome, completing the effect of the architectural theme. Additionally, many of the internal surfaces and fixtures depicting various forms of sea life provided elaborate decoration. The aquarium's designs and architecture plans were finalized in 1927. After two years of construction, the exterior of the aquarium was completed in February 1929. The Shedd Aquarium Society had hoped to open the aquarium up to the public shortly after, but a few challenges prevented that from happening. First, the United States experienced a stock market crash in October, causing the country to decline into a deep state of financial depression. Delays were also caused by the aquarium's inability to secure the necessary equipment and materials to transport salt water and fishes to the aquarium building. Despite the obstacles, the Society set plans to open the aquarium in December of that year. On December 10th, a train car called the Nautilus arrived with the first delivery of fish. Seven days later, Chicago experienced a terrible blizzard on December 17th. Nonetheless, the John G. Shedd Aquarium opened its big bronze doors to the public two days later on December 19, 1929. On opening day, the only exhibit on display was the sunken tropical pool in the rotunda 
known as the swamp scene. The tropical swamp contained native freshwater fishes, reptiles, amphibians, and tropical plants in a 40-foot diameter freshwater pool. The sunken pool received natural light from the dome directly above. The galleries of exhibit tanks were not yet ready and would not open for public viewing until the following year. Despite the limited animal displays, the public came pouring in that winter to view the beautiful architecture, such as amazing marble decor, the skylight dome, and the bronze fixtures. Once the water parameters in the display tanks stabilized, collecting for fish began in the spring of 1930. Not having the convenience of modern resources and transportation as we have today, the Shedd Aquarium relied on a Pullman train car named the Nautilus to transport the first marine fishes to the aquarium. The unique car was custom built for long range trips, including equipment to sustain freshwater and marine fish. Installed in the car were tanks, pumps, air compressors, electric refrigeration coils, and steam heat. The Nautilus even contained modest living quarters for crew members who accompanied the transport. In April 1930, the Nautilus began trips to Key West as well as other parts of Florida, Maine, and California before returning to the Midwest with collections for the aquarium. The first gallery of display tanks opened on May 30, 1930. After 160 railroad cars loaded with salt water had been delivered to the aquarium, the final two galleries of display tanks opened to the public in October of 1930. In 1931, a final exhibit hall opened. These freshwater exhibits mimicked the home aquarium display. Originally called the Balanced Aquarium, the room later was renamed Tributaries. By that time, the Shedd Aquarium had hosted 4.69 million visitors, becoming the first inland aquarium to house marine and freshwater fishes from both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. To accompany the viewing experience, visitors had access to an aquarium guide in the earliest years. The guide included some photos, color plates, and narratives introducing the John G. Shedd Aquarium. A color-coded page educated guests on the different types of aquatic environments represented in the aquarium and their characteristics. Visitors were able to read the names and descriptions of each animal on display by matching the tank number with the number listed in the guide. The guide also included statistics about the aquarium as well as an index. In 1933, Chicago hosted the World's Fair. A special fish nicknamed Grandad was acquired for the occasion. Grandad was an Australian lungfish that called Shedd Aquarium his home until 2017 when he passed on. He was the world's oldest fish at the time of his death. While the Shedd Aquarium was doing well, the Lincoln Park Zoo Aquarium was forced to close its doors in 1936 due to multiple factors. In addition to becoming overshadowed by the Shedd, the zoo faced challenges acquiring necessary funds for operations due to the Great Depression. Even more, the health department had recently mandated a practice that was devastating to fish. 
Historically, the zoo extracted raw water from Lake Michigan for use in its hatchery. But the new health department mandate required that the extracted water be treated with chlorine. Unable to sustain its fish inventory due to this practice, the zoo gifted its more than 400 remaining fishes to the Shedd Aquarium upon its closing. The Shedd graciously accepted the donation and in return donated a Mata Mata turtle to Lincoln Park Zoo. Through the 1940s and 50s, the Shedd Aquarium navigated challenges of keeping well-stocked aquariums due to World War II and limitations of available transportation at the time. In 1957, the Nautilus collection car was retired. Trips through all seasons and weather, as well as regular visits to the ocean, caused the railroad car to eventually rust out. It was then just a matter of time before railway transportation of saltwater and marine fish would become obsolete. Throughout the 1960s, Shed's notoriety grew in conjunction with its streams of visitors. More important than becoming an icon to the public, the Shed constantly sought ways to make improvements for the benefit of its animals and the environment. By the end of the decade, new options for collecting and transporting specimens had become available and with less cost. In 1970, the Shedd Aquarium received its final delivery of seawater transported by a barge. The water was pumped into the aquarium through fire hoses borrowed from the Chicago Fire Department. After that, the Shedd began making its own synthetic seawater. Mixing synthetic seawater was significantly less expensive than transporting it. However, it was very labor-intensive. A batch of 110,000 gallons of seawater required approximately three weeks of preparation. These batches were prepared multiple times throughout the year. Today, the Shedd Aquarium relies on synthetic sea salt to make its own homemade seawater producing approximately 3 million gallons of water a year to replenish its exhibits. Capabilities for collecting specimens also changed by the 1970s. Rather than rely on barges or even small fishing boats, as they did for a time, the aquarium purchased a yacht which they named RV Coral Reef. The vessel served both the Shedd Aquarist and Educational Departments until it was retired in 1982 when upgrade and repair costs became too substantial. The RV Coral Reef II continued the duties of its predecessor in 1984. This vessel was state-of-the-art and specifically designed for collecting, research, and education trips. Because of its unique capabilities and specialized equipment, the vessel is charted out by other aquariums, colleges, and research institutions. In 1971, the sunken tropical pool in the rotunda was replaced with the infamous Caribbean reef that many of us know today at the Shedd Aquarium. The reef holds 90,000 gallons of seawater and contains multiple specimens of different varieties. To prevent an overabundance of algae growth in the Caribbean reef, the glass ceiling dome above was blackened out and the walls above the marble were painted dark green. However, these changes left the Caribbean reef looming in darkness. So in 1999, new lighting was installed to highlight the ornate architecture of the room and the reef. In 1987, 60 years after the original groundbreaking of the Shedd Aquarium, the first cornerstone of the new Abbott Oceanarium was laid. 
a seawall was built out into Lake Michigan. The wall was laid with 20,000 cubic yards of landfill, which was dumped into Lake Michigan. In this way, the aquarium edifice would extend out to the lake to add its new addition, which would accommodate 30 million gallons of water. Unlike the main part of the aquarium, the oceanarium was completely bound by lake water on one side. As a result, the positioning of the 2 million gallon whale harbor gives the illusion of flowing directly out into Lake Michigan. Expansion and ingenuity continued to keep the Shedd Aquarium at the forefront of aquarium exhibits worldwide. In 1989, the Shedd began relying on cargo jets to receive shipments of new acquisitions, such as beluga whales imported from Canada. A decade later, the Shedd reached a milestone when the third beluga calf, Kayavak, was born. When Kayavak celebrated her first birthday, the Shedd staff knew that their rigorous efforts had resulted in the successful rearing of a baby beluga whale. Through the decades, the Shedd's reputation as a rescue and conservation center developed. One example was the partnership between the Shedd Aquarium and Project Seahorse. The collaboration resulted in a special exhibit called Seahorse Symphony, which ran from 1998 through 2003. The exhibit featured many species of seahorses and their relatives, such as sea dragons, pipefish, shrimpfish, and more. Beyond providing fascinating specimens for viewers, the exhibit created conservation awareness and an understanding of the threats that endangered seahorses' existence. In 2000, Galleries 1 and 2 were replaced with a new Amazon Rising exhibit. The exhibit offers a walkthrough experience of a tropical rainforest. Visitors can view scenes of a flooding habitat and the animals it sustains. But Shedd's innovation efforts didn't stop there. In 2003, the Shedd Aquarium expanded its exhibit offerings again. This time it went underground to create the Wild Reef. The Wild Reef experience features coral reef animals from the Philippines. The reef offers colorful sightings of many exotic species. One of the extraordinary exhibits of the Wild Reef is the large 400,000 gallon full wall aquarium, which includes sharks among other specimens. The reef exhibit is a favorite among visitors offering tranquil and mesmerizing views. Over the years, the Shedd Aquarium acquired or rescued many special specimens that were put on exhibit. Nickel, the green sea turtle, was one such case. Injured in the wild from a boat strike, the turtle was permanently damaged and could not swim properly. In 2003, Nickel joined other inhabitants of the Caribbean Reef and is still there as of 2022. As the Shedd Aquarium approaches its 100-year anniversary, it is still considered one of the world's most impressive and respected public aquariums. As a visionary leader in providing for future generations, it is committed to the best health for its animals and a quality experience for its visitors through research, education, and conservation programs. The aquarium's efforts will educate current and future generations for the benefit of our environment and its aquatic animals. In the words of the aquarium, they are sparking compassion, curiosity, and conservation for the aquatic animal world. 
To learn more about the Shedd Aquarium, please refer to the references listed here. Or better still, plan a visit to the Shedd Aquarium and consider becoming a member.